Hey everybody, my name is Patrick and I own McDonald Timing, but I also own a small software company called Fieldworks. And I wanna to talk to you today about the latest program we developed that I am giving away for free. I started Fieldworks during the pandemic and uh, it's really, it's just me, but we have three products, three programs that are in, in you know, various states of development. One is Fieldworks, uh, which is a low cost, easy to use, field event scoring solution, uh, works on Windows and takes in inputs from like a laser distance devices via Bluetooth and outputs to scoreboards, including uh, the finished results board. And also over the winter time here, I'm gonna be adding wind gauges to the mix. Um, so that is available right now. Licensed Soldier has been really happy with it. I've been really happy with it as well. So uh, there's that. Uh, and then I'm working on another program called DisplayWorks, which is a, another low-cost solution for scoreboard software um, that should be coming out in beta later this summer and then released fully properly over the winter time. Um, very low cost solution, not quite as powerful as kind of the main competitor out there, but should be uh, right up the alley of a lot of high school related timers who are now dealing with more scoreboards in stadiums. Uh, works with finish links and also Eagle Eye. So those are out there or about to be uh, soon too. Anyway, the latest thing that I've been working on is something that I personally needed, and it is a finish links cataloger for cross-country finishers, basically. Now you can use it for track events as, as well and everything, but it is primarily focused on uh, cross-country finishers. And the reason why is that we often, uh, well, we use shoe chips for cross-country, and if that shoe chip gets kicked off in the middle of the race or uh, never got on in the first place, we might have a photo of a finisher that we don't know who it is. And instead of trying to hop out and track down the kid or their coach, uh, I think it's often a lot easier just to go into a, a, a you know a file and a folder and try to find a couple athletes. Uh, you know, typically we're able to use deduction pretty easily, and so I suspect that this is going to save us a huge amount of time over the long run by just you know running this little program and outputting all these these files. So that's it. Um, if that's not interesting to you, then you can you know click off the video and thank you for watching up to now. But I'm going to explain how it works. I'm going to give you the two different ways that you can go and get the program to actually use it. And then I'm going to show you kind of uh, how easy it is to actually operate and run. So if uh, that's interesting to you, keep following along. And if not, thank you for watching. So uh, two ways you can get. One, fieldworks.app, and the link is in the description below. You can download a, an installer for it, and you can install it, and, and you're ready to go. Two, GitHub. Uh, there's a GitHub link down below, and you can download the entire code. You can clone the repo, and then you can actually make your own installer for it if you really want to. Uh, I don't really recommend that. But if you are proficient enough and have Node installed on your computer, you can actually just grab the single Node file that it's running and then go from there. Um, you're not going to get all the console logs and everything, as you probably are aware, but it, it, you can actually run just the Node file. If you don't know what that means, then just go get the installer. Either way though, you're going to need Lynx 12.1 and you are going to need the LSS file uh, because that's how this program gets its information from Lynx. So really briefly, you're gonna set up uh, a scoreboard in Finish Links, and then you're gonna set up the remote control setup in Finish Links, and then you're going to open uh, the FL Cataloger. That is going to create two servers, one for the results, and then one to tell Links what to do, the remote control part of it. Links is going to output a scoreboard line, and then the, the uh, server is going to parse it and ask the remote server to send a, a piece of information back to Links. Links is then going to save a file of a time and label it as the athlete school and then the athlete's name in the scoreboard line. That's that's how it all works. So it's pretty simple. Um, you know, again, you do need to set some things up. So I recommend going to the GitHub page regardless. And you can kind of see there's a little bit of walk through a guide there. But I'm going to show you now how easy it is to actually do this whole thing. Quick walk through. 
we have links opened and it's now looking for hardware, but that's not important. We have a folder where we're going to save all these things to. We have a folder that's open that has a couple of cross country events. And then we have FL catalog open. And you can see I've got it set up so that the dev tools actually show constantly. Um, I think this, this is a relatively important thing, uh, but we have remote control is connected, which is saying that the FL catalog can tell links what to do. And there's a scoreboard connection. Uh, the scoreboard connection is actually the most important part of it because the scoreboard is getting is is actually sending information to FL catalog about who is where and what they are. So in this case, we're sending place and sending first name, and then we're sending one person every two seconds. And so what's happening is Lynx is saying, okay, this is a person at this time, and here's their name and their information. FL catalog is then converting it and then asking that Lynx save a a image of that person at that time from the Identilinx and then going from there. And the input and output directory, the output is the most important, the cataloger, so that's going to this folder here. Uh, so um, all we need to do is fire up an event and should be going, there we go. Now, uh, just a couple of things. There's a counter that's happening basically in FL catalog and that's going up every single time. So it's looking at the place and saying, okay, that place is now larger than the one I just did. So when it gets to the end of the event, in this case, after 60 some people, 61 athletes, uh, it will go through the DNSs, but since that's not a number, then they won't register. And then when it recycles to go through again, it will say, okay, that's a smaller number. And so we'll get a little bit of an error down here. And it's not a big deal. It's just telling you that it's done. You could right now walk away, especially if it's a much, much larger event. You could walk away, be done, not worry about it. Come back later, hours from now, and it'll still be going, but it will not be doing anything. That said, after it is done, if you want to then open up the men's event, you would need to go to FL Catalog, and then view, and then reload. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a way that I can do this programmatically, but I've just not been that interested in it. It's such a, a small and sweet little application. There's really no reason to. And uh, the source map error, don't worry about that. If you see some sort of source map error, that's not a problem either. You can see we have 58, 59, 60, and then 61, and then we should get an error right here. There we go. I've worked through the results, and it's saying that I cannot do anything else, and it means you're good to go. Um, again, you can just walk away right now, but we will go ahead and reload. Close that one, and then we will reload the program, and it connects again super quickly, and we will open up the men's race, and then you can see the item count is now going up once again. So there you go. So hopefully that makes sense, um, or at least enough sense that you can kind of track down things on your own. Uh, the GitHub page has really good information about how it all is set up and everything. Uh, so you'll need that information and actually to make it work. But I have done this already. I've got several thousand images already ready to rumble uh, for myself and for my technicians. And yeah, hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching.